All right, now let's talk about our next application of Home Studio. One of the most important uses of the Home Recording Studio is for musicians. Now professional studios have the luxury of having multiple rooms for multiple tasks, but you'll most likely have one room for everything. So naturally the setup will be different. So the general idea is to have two stations, number one desk or mixing area for the engineers and number two recording area for the artist. But the problem however is this setup won't really work out for your home recording studio. So the one step solution for this would be to cram all your gear around you in a circle and this eventually will allow you to play both the engineer and the artist from one single location. Now here are some of the pointers that you need to avoid in selecting your room. Number one, avoid smaller spaces. The general rule of thumb says the bigger the better because sound travels better in larger spaces. Number two, noises. In everyday lives we tend to forget as to how much noise is actually around us but when we hear it through a microphone all that noise gets amplified by a hundred times. And here are some of the common sources of noise that can simply ruin your recording like wind, rain, traffic, neighbors, birds and sometimes even your neighbors stuck in traffic on a windy rainy day. Alright, number three is poor flooring. Now for your recording room, hard flooring such as concrete, tile or even hard wood is ideal and plus running an additional area rug on the floor works just fine. Now a lot of people assume that because they own an expensive pair of studio monitors, they have figured the good monitoring issue once and for all. But the truth, my friends, is that it's much, much more than that. Good monitoring starts with good positioning. And good positioning is dependent on wide combination of factors such as the position of your head, the position of the walls, and the position of your desks and chairs. A seemingly minute detail like the monitor placement can have a greater impact on the sound than the monitors themselves. Alright, now let's learn a little bit about the standard mixing or monitoring position. While the correct mixing or monitoring position is always subject to debate, most of today's engineers are in agreement as to what's generally considered to be ideal. And what is generally considered to be ideal can be summed up with some simple rules. Number one, your head should form an equilateral triangle with your monitor. Number two, point your monitor directly towards your head. Number three, place your monitor against the longest wall. And finally, number four, there should be some space created between the monitor and the rear wall. Now, musicians require additional hardware like the audio interface. For this particular setup, we shall be using Studio 2 audio interface, a boom stand and C01 condenser microphone by Extreme Acoustics. Now that you've acquired all your equipments, it is important that you get a solid understanding of how it all fits together to form one single working system. In recording circles, this concept is known as signal flow, which simply means the path an audio signal has to travel through your gear from beginning to end. All right, so let's try to understand the signal flow. So firstly, the interface helps us connect the microphones and cables into them and in turn, this interface is connected to a computer. Number two, the interface converts this analog signal into digital signal, which is fed to the computer for the digital audio workstation to process this signal. Number three, within the digital audio workstation, this signal is processed by any number of inserted plugins and mixed with any tracks in session. Number four, after all the processes is completed by the DAW, this signal is once again sent back to the audio interface where the digital signal is once again converted back into analog signals. Number five, this signal is finally sent to two places that is the headphones and studio monitors. Now please remember, this is the final step before the signal is finally converted into sound. So if and when the analog signal reaches the headphone output, it is sent to the headphones and when the analog signal reaches the monitor output, it is sent to the studio monitors. Now firstly, we shall connect the audio interface to the workstation using the provided USB cable. 
Now, we attach the microphone to the boom stand provided and connect the XLR cable from the microphone to the port 1 of our audio interface. Now, we enable the phantom power supply. Now, open up any DAW of your choice and set the input and output to Studio 2. We then plug in our headphones into the headphone port found behind the interface and connect the monitors to the monitor output ports also found behind the interface. Now we set the right levels for our recording using the gain knobs but make sure you don't let the level clips by increasing it way too up. We shall now start recording either vocals or an instrument. You may alternatively just use an instrument cable and record your instrument by plugging it into the same port. But make sure to keep the phantom off. Hey, want to know something really cool? You can record both vocals and instruments simultaneously. Make sure you set correct listening levels on your headphones so that we can get the required volume in the final export of the track. Once recorded, you may go ahead and export the track in your required file format. Additionally, music producers use another instrument called the MIDI keyboard now mind you, MIDI keyboard does not generate any sound on its own. It just sends the MIDI data to your DAW software and all the actual sound is generated inside your computer using different types of softwares or plugins. I am sure with the help of this course, you must have already set up your own home studio and are all geared up for your first recording. So thank you so much folks for joining us on this journey with Crack. We shall see you soon with yet another course. Until then, keep cracking.